In this video, we're going to take a look at oxidation reduction reactions. Um, so, as I said in the last video, an oxidation reduction or a redox reaction involves a transfer of an electron between one reactant and another to form some kind of new products. And the big marker for this, and the thing that's going to allow us to figure out who is losing and who is gaining electrons, is the oxidation numbers. So we're going to track the oxidation numbers in the reactants and the products to see which uh, reactant and product is, is gaining and losing an electron. So we can separate redox reactions into two what we call half reactions. The half reactions occur simultaneously. And we have two of them. So one is the oxidation half reaction. And so this is the species that loses electrons. And we have the reduction half reaction, which is the species that gains electrons. And so if a species is losing electrons, it's becoming more positive. So what we tend to see with this is an increase in the oxidation number. And with a reduction, we tend to see a decrease in the oxidation number because the, um, the species is gaining electrons, so it's becoming less positive. And so all of this takes place simultaneously. It's not like one thing gets oxidized and then a couple of seconds later, the other thing gets reduced. It's basically when, when one thing gets oxidized, the other thing is getting reduced at the exact same time. So it's, it's a direct electron transfer. Um, so let's take a look at an example. If we take zinc solid plus copper sulfate aqueous goes to copper solid plus zinc sulfate aqueous, um, we can start to look at this in terms of the oxidations and reductions of what's going on. So the first step that I like to do is I like to write the net ionic equation. This helps you to just get rid of the spectator ions, and that way you're not spending a lot of time on looking for oxidation numbers of things that aren't really changing because they're just spectating. So to get the net ionic, we can say, well, we have zinc solid, so that's going to definitely come down. And then copper sulfate is aqueous, and that's soluble, so we're going to get copper 2 plus aqueous plus SO4 2 minus aqueous. And then we're going to get copper solid and then we're gonna get zinc two plus aqueous plus SO4 two minus aqueous. We can get rid of the SO4, that's a spectator, and we're left with zinc solid plus copper two plus aqueous goes to copper solid plus zinc two plus aqueous. All right, so now let's start assigning some oxidation numbers, and this is a pretty easy one. So in this case, the zinc gets an oxidation number of zero, it's an element in its standard state, the copper gets a copper two plus. Uh, that's a two plus oxidation number because it's copper two plus. The copper on the product side gets a zero and the zinc gets a zinc two plus. So what's going on here? Well, if we wanna to try to identify the oxidation and reduction half reactions, what we do is we basically write, we can write these sort of arms that tell us what is the change in the oxidation number of each reactant um, as it goes to a product. So in this case, the zinc is losing two electrons. So this one is being oxidized. And I know that because it's going from zinc zero, zinc zero to zinc two plus. So if the oxidation number increases, that means it ha must have lost two electrons to give us the two plus charge. And I can, we can do the same thing for copper. Copper is going from two plus to copper zero. So this one is gaining two electrons and therefore it is being reduced. So now we know which species is reduced and we know which species is oxidized. So we can write our half reactions for this by doing the following. So the way that I like to write my half reactions is I basically take my reactant and my product and they're linked together, right? So the zinc is going to be linked with the zinc and the copper is going to be linked with the copper. So I just write it as it is in the reaction. So I just say, well, we have zinc solid on the left and we have zinc two plus on the right. And we have copper two plus on the left and we have copper solid on the right. We know that one of these is being oxidized and one is being reduced. So the one that's being oxidized, electrons are gonna to have to be a product. So we should add that up here. Electrons are a product. And let me show you why they have to be a product. So whenever you write an electrochemical reaction, the electrochemical reaction has to be balanced both in terms of the, 
the mass, so we have to have the same number of zinc atoms, but it also has to be balanced in terms of the charge. So in order to balance this one, if we have an, a zero overall charge on the left and we have a two plus charge on the right, we can write two electrons over here, which makes sense, right? We know the zinc is being oxidized. It's losing two electrons and going to the two plus state. So we have to denote those two electrons as products because um, we can't lose electrons. We can't lose mass. So the electrons have to be considered as mass also. And for the other one, we have to conserve charge as well. So we have copper 2 plus goes to copper. Well, to make this one uh, balance out with charge, I have to put two electrons as a reactant. Then we have zero charge on the left and zero charge on the right. So now we can get a better picture here of what's going on. So our oxidation half reaction and our reduction half reaction start to make more sense. Our oxidation half reaction, we have zinc goes to zinc 2 plus. It gives off two electrons as a product. The, zinc, the zinc's uh, charge goes up by two. And we have uh, the reduction half reaction where we have the electrons as a reactant, meaning the copper receives them and then it goes to copper solid. So that's how you write that oxidation and reduction half reactions. We have to define two more terms that are related to this. So we have what's called an oxidizing agent and we have what's called a reducing agent. When we're talking about agents, an agent is, some, is somebody that causes something else to happen. So an oxidizing agent causes the oxidation of another species. So the oxidizing agent is reduced, or it's the reduced species. And the um, reducing agent is the, it causes the reduction of another species. And so this is the species that is oxidized. So it's, it's basically the opposite. So another way of thinking about the oxidizing and reducing agent is that um, the species that's oxidized, so in this case, the species that's oxidized is equal to the zinc solid, and that's gonna equal our reducing agent. And the species that's reduced is equal to the copper two plus aqueous, so this is equal to the oxidizing agent. And typically, so to answer a couple of questions right off the bat, a lot of times we get asked, can a product be an oxidizing or reducing agent? The answer to that is no. When you're talking about oxidizing and reducing agents, they can only be reactants. So um, you, should, you should never write a product when you're identifying an oxidizing or reducing agent. Another common question is, Dr. K, what if I wrote, for example, for the, for the reducing agent in this case, could I write copper two plus aqueous or copper sulfate aqueous? Yes, you can. Uh, as long as you identify a reactant, whether it's the copper two plus or the copper sulfate, that's fine. Um, we don't, we're not going to be picky about that. Uh, whether you're, you know, you're talking about the complete ionic or the net ionic. In reality, that entire reagent uh, counts as the as the reducing agent or the oxidizing agent. So the, both would be fine. So that, those answers are the two most common questions. So this is our first example. And what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, work out the oxidation and reduction half reactions for this. So remember, step one with this, and this tends to help, is to write the net ionic equation. Because like in this case, for example, the chlorides are going to go away when you write the net ionic. So uh, you guys practice this at home and make sure you get the same answer as I do. The net ionic is going to be that we have two aluminum solid plus three Fe2 plus aqueous goes to two aluminum three plus aqueous plus three Fe solid. So what I did was I basically took out the chloride, which I know on both sides is going to be just a spectator. So now let's calculate the oxidation numbers for each atom in the reaction above. To be safe, we're going to calculate the um, we're going to calculate the chloride also, just so that you can see that the that not only is it a spectator ion, but that it's it's um, that its oxidation number isn't changing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to identify the reactants and we're going to identify the products, just so that we're clear. 
So the aluminum on the left is going to have an oxidation number of zero. It's an element, so it's aluminum solid. The iron on the left, that one's now easy to see. That's going to be a 2 plus. And then the chloride on the left, if we look at that, we see that it's FeCl2, so that's going to be minus 1. So now let's look at the product side. So the aluminum now is going to be 3 plus. The iron is going to be 0. And the chloride is still going to be minus 1 because it's associated with that aluminum 3 plus. So you see that not only is it a spectator ion, but this doesn't have a change. These are the ones that are changing from products to reactants. And what we see is the iron is gaining two electrons, so this is being reduced, and the aluminum is losing three electrons, so it's being oxidized. So now let's write those uh, half reactions. So the aluminum goes from aluminum zero to aluminum three plus. And the iron is going from iron two plus to iron solid. So now if we wanna balance these out with charge, we're gonna put three electrons on the right over here and we're gonna put two electrons on the left. So that's how we write the half reactions. And now it says identify the oxidizing and reducing agent. So we know that aluminum is the species that's being oxidized. So if that's the species being oxidized, then our reducing agent is going to be the aluminum. And our oxidizing agent is going to be the iron, because remember, it's opposite. The aluminum in this case is being oxidized, so therefore it is the reducing agent. And the iron is being reduced, so therefore it is the oxidizing agent.